Akron Aggies had their finest season as a four-year school by advancing to the finals of the NAIA playoffs. In sports, though, all teams with a great season, except one, end their season with disappointment in playoff situations. Cameron traveled to Jefferson City, Tennessee for the championship final to play the Carson Newman Eagles, where they dropped a 17 to nothing decisive victory. The Aggies felt they had not played to their potential on that day and still believed they could be national champions. 1987 was their chance to make everyone else believe it as well. The Aggies started their season avenging their only regular season loss of 1986, beating Southeastern 13 to nothing in Durant. Cameron opened their limited home schedule on the second week hosting the Henderson State Reddies. The Aggies' Houston Veer offense drove down the field in substantial fashion, putting the first points on the board with Chuck Smith's eight-yard run. Cameron's Veer offense was many times a time-consuming offense. In order to avoid tiring out, sometimes the Aggies would go for the big play, and they proved to be very capable as LaVon Davis throws to Gordon Leatherbury. Despite an effective offense in 1987, the Aggies' strong suit had always been defense and this was no time to give up the limelight. Pat Hartline's 29-yard interception for a touchdown was the telling blow in Cameron's 32-13 win over Henderson State, who may have been the Reddies, but they weren't prepared enough on this day. The following week, the Aggies hosted Fort Hayes State. The punt return team played a key role in giving the Aggies excellent field position. Charles Washington had six returns for a total of 155 yards. Chuck Smith enjoyed the field position personally as he scored three touchdowns in route to a 37-12 win over the Fighting Tigers from Kansas. After a win on the road over Abilene Christian, the Aggies returned to Cameron Stadium for their final regular season home game, which was also a homecoming. The opponent was Central State, who the Aggies hadn't defeated in six years. The Broncos were not having one of their better seasons, but records were disregarded in this heated state rivalry. Roosevelt Gamble put the Aggies up front with this touchdown. Central State made a fight of it as they scored a touchdown early in the second quarter, but the Aggies gave up as much as they were going to on this night. Gamble completed this touchdown pass to Jake Brownlow that put the Aggies ahead to stay. The Broncos were ready to return to Wantland Stadium in Edmond as they wanted no more of the Aggies. A 31-13 victory put the Aggies at 5-0, their best start since they were known as Cameron State Agriculture Junior College in the 60s. Unfortunately for Cameron, that perfect record would see its first blemish as they dropped a 21-20 heartbreaker to Elon College in North Carolina. The Aggies didn't dwell long on the loss as they traveled back to the Sooner State, 
the hosting Langston Lions, were treated rudely as Cameron made themselves at home. The final score, Cameron 69, Langston nothing. Cameron dropped another loss, this time to Texas a and But with their win over Texas Lutheran, the Aggies not only guaranteed a spot in the NAIA playoffs, but they would host a round one game. The Aggies saw success on an individual basis as well. Defensive end Pat Hartline and defensive tackle Thomas O'Kelly, along with offensive tackle Mike Lorenzen, were named first team All-Americans. Charles Washington made the second team as he led the Aggies in punt returns and interceptions. Other success stories were seen with Robert Whitman, rushing for 916 yards, and Chuck Smith, who was the Aggies' personal freight train, leading the team in scoring with 66 points, and they were hard-fought points. The Aggies had several defensive standouts, but Joe Watkins led all with 54 tackles. More necessary than individual performances, was a concentrated team effort for what was coming up. The Emporia State Hornets came into Cameron Stadium looking to sting the Aggies. some inspiring play, and the Hornets went from green to blue. Navon Davis paced the offense with a 54-yard touchdown run and a 73-yard scoring pass to Ronnie Walters as the Aggies triumph 17-12. The following week, the Aggies saw the return of the Central Arkansas Bears, a team that one year ago in the opening round of the playoffs went four overtimes with Cameron before missing an extra point and losing 35 to 34. This year there would be no overtime, but there was plenty of intensity. With the game tied at seven, early in the fourth quarter, Cameron's 5-2 defense did what all exceptional defenses do, continue to deny the opponent until the offense can make an advantage. Robert 
Stuart Whitman ran Bevere to the left side. And 43 yards later, Cameron was on top, 14 to 7. Central Arkansas had opportunities to tie or win the game. One chance was fumbled away. Then in the closing minutes, Joe Watkins ended the Bears' chances on a fourth down play. semi-final contest, Cameron met another foe from last year's playoffs, the Gorillas of Pittsburgh State. Cameron won 20 to 10 and a great come from behind win. For the second straight year, Cameron was in the championship game and once again, they would face Carson Newman. But this time, the game would be played in Lawton. December 19th, 1987. The rains came and soaked the Cameron Stadium AstroTurf. But rain or cold, nothing could dampen the emotions involved here. The game started slow as neither team can mount an effective attack in the first quarter. Suddenly, things began to change. Last year, the Eagles scored first, and the momentum of that carried them to a shutout win. The Aggies were hoping that this first touchdown would dictate the game this year. Their hopes were confirmed. Rosie Gamble scored here and the avalanche was falling on Carson Newman. Chuck Smith capped the day with this touchdown run. The Aggies led 30 to nothing. Their chance for a shutout was lost on a botched punt for a safety. However, the sweetness of this victory was not lost as the defense prevented the Eagle offense from scoring and proved to be the catalyst for the Aggies' success. The final play summed up the game as Kerry Johnson intercepted a Carson Newman pass. final season of being recognized as an NAIA team. They went out in splendid fashion. The nation now knew where Lawton, Oklahoma was. It was the city that spawned the best team in the NAIA.